Hey GH peeps, welcome back to my channel where we talk all things General Hospital. Today's late night review is for Thursday guys. One more day in the weekend. Hey, one more day in the weekend. It is Thursday, February the 29th, 2024. Hope you guys had a good leap year day. I had a pretty good leap year day. Feeling a lot better. How was GH GH and for you guys? Any highs? Any lows? Any ooh, somebody about to go to blows? <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, what, what job? Oh, 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 my, okay, oh. Mm. And in truth, what's Sonny about that life? Because he said, whoa, whoa, man, what you doing? Then he was like, what? Come at me then. I was like, okay. First you was backing off, then you was backing up. So was you at that time like, no, no, you the cop trying to beat on me, but I'm about to beat you back? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is, mm. <laughs> As always, guys, please leave your comments and highlights in the comment section. I really do love your guys' interaction and your thoughts um, on what today's show is. I need to catch up on some of my comments, actually. Sometimes I just get into the writing thing and pass out. But anywho, guys, let's talk about some GH, because GH was pretty given for a Thirsty Thursday. Yes, I must say, I must say. But let's hit this. Oh, and if you like the channel, please hit the like button. And if you like the content, please hit the subscription button. And hey, new subscribers, welcome to the couch. It's always a pleasure to have new people come hang out. I hope I earn your subscriptions. Anyway, guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about GH. I'm going to drink a little water. So, we're at the Valinos. And, guys, I, you know what? I wish, you know, we're going to have to do a live. Don't worry. Tori's working on that. Why am I talking about myself in third person? But, anyway, um, we're going to have because I don't, am I, I hope I'm saying this right. Valinos Gym. Valinos? 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 I don't know. Valinos Gym. And uh, Mike is, and um, Mike asks Sonny, is this how it's going to be? Because Sonny ain't trying to hear nothing from his Judas son. <laughs> Every time I get to hear Sonny call Michael Judas, I'm, <laughs> it just does something for me. I just love it. And he does it so perfectly. But anywho, Sonny tells him that he has no idea how he, he Sonny tells me, you don't have no idea how I feel. My own son betraying me, trying to set me up. When Mike tells him that he was only trying to protect him, Sonny says, from who? From you? I was like, <laughs> okay, Carithos, Sonny was hitting on the cues today, guys. <laughs> are, you, are you gonna lie? I had to rewind that twice. <laughs> Just to make sure I heard what he said. Talking about who you who I need protection from, your butt. That's who I need protection from. Sonny was hitting him with the one liners through the whole entire time, though. And Dante asked Mike to give them a second, because you know he, you know, look, you know, just let me talk to Dad real quick. You know what I'm saying? You know, put a little, you know, word in for you. And uh, Sonny uh, says today he's sorry and remorseful, but tomorrow I'll make him mad and he'll be calling the feds. <laughs> Fact and truth. You know, of all the times that I thought that Michael would ever want his father to go to jail would have been when he shot his father. Yes, it hurt when he cheated on his mom. And yes, it hurt when he sat there with this woman that was going to end up stabbing him in the back anyway. Because Nina was still going to do what Nina was going to do, regardless of what Michael and, his, and the whole entire situation with that. But, yeah, he, he uh, it was a backstabbing, but my position would be to remove myself from that individual. No, I wouldn't take my mother from my grandkids, but as far as me and my mother goes, we just wouldn't be cordial. There would not, I'm not going to say cordial because I would always respect her, but there would be nothing to talk about. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, would not, would not be happening. You can see your grandkids because those are your grandkids, but me and you, that's, that done nada. 
You know what I'm saying? You, you love. Especially about, not even about the mom, about the cheating on my mama. I'm going to say about my dad. Yeah, if that was my, you know, or either vice versa. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that kind of wicked shit. So I can, I can feel, especially because Sonny a gangster. There's a code that you don't do. And you already, and Michael already knows that his mama and Brenda did the same thing. Did the same thing. So, I mean, Michael gonna have to eat some poop and sit his butt down while he trying to say, I'm just trying to protect my dad. You weren't trying to protect your dad when you were setting him up. Then he always talking about, well, I was trying to do it, but I stopped. I stopped. And, and, and I wanted to, him to protect you. And? So, I, I feel Sonny on his disgust for his son. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> Because I was, I was kind of on the fence because his, I didn't like Nina, but that's your, my, my, that, there's, that's, that's, his, that's his dad. It's just different. I, I can, Sonny's going to need time and I don't blame him and he's going to need some good time. You know what I'm saying? To forgive uh, Michael because I wouldn't trust his butt either. And when he said, yeah, he's feeling sorry today, but if I make him mad, he's going to call the police on me. So now I got to walk on eggshells around this motherfucker. <laughs> Him. Shit, I'm the I'm the Don. <laughs> but moving on, moving on. I'm getting caught up again, guys. Sonny, uh, Dante's still trying to smooth things out, and Sonny's just like the damage is done, and I can't trust him. That my own son. And when Dante tells Sonny that uh, Mike loves him and he just wants him to be okay, he says it again. <laughs> he says Judas. Judas does not get the right <laughs> to anything about my life. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, every time I get to hear Sonny call Michael Judas, I'm just going to go crack up laughing. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. That's just beautiful. When Dante continues to, um, when he continues to push and he's like, you know, when he continues to, you know, try to fight for Michael Sonny turns to him. He says, whose side are you on? Now, this is the first time in this whole entire scene where I can finally say, you should not ask your son to side with you on that. That's wrong thinking. You do not want your children. You, you don't do that. Just like when the opposite came down and Dante had turned Michael in and that whole entire horribleness came and everybody was siding up against Dante, guess who Michael was with? His big bro, Dante. You know why? Because then he didn't. That you don't do that. You don't. You don't ask the family to choose sides. That's that should just stay between you and them. So when Sonny said that, I, I felt him in his anger. You know, he's just lashing out, being himself. But you don't want to make your son, your, your sons in that kind of situation. There is no side. They're your, do your kids siblings. This is between me and this sibling. So. That was the first time I was like, you know, you went a little too far with that one. Don't be asking Dante to choose. But Dante answers back perfectly. He says, I'm on your side, Dad. Just like Michael is. And it's beautiful that Dante knows that Michael did wrong, but he's forgiving Michael at the same time. He was throwing in Michael's face. Dude, you did this. You did it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he's fighting in his corner like he didn't do it, Dad. He didn't turn him in. I like the fact that they're strengthening Michael and Dante a lot more, you know, instead of tearing them apart in this whole entire Sunny situation. And that makes me wonder how maybe it's not going to be that long for Sonny to be mad at Michael. I don't know. I mean, I really don't care. <laughs> to be honest with you either, it's kind of funny to me. But, the you know, the family drama can only last so long. We got enough stuff going on on the inside. Let's, let's face them realities. And um, Dante acknowledges that he should be hurt and disappointed. But Michael is family. So you eventually are going to have to be civil one day. Because he's like, what are you going to do? Just keep walking out the room when he comes over. And Sonny, not being the adult in this situation... It's like, so what, I got to be civil <laughs> with Judas? <laughs> like, come on, man, you the adult. I'd be mad as hell at my kid. But I'm not going to be sitting there doing this because I'm the adult. <laughs> Sonny ain't trying to be no adult right now. He got too many people coming after him and too many bullets 
whizzing past his head. Uh, and then he then he mentions that this wasn't my doing. I didn't I didn't do anything. I I, I don't know, guys. Y'all let me know what y'all thought when he said this wasn't my doing, because I I took it as he's as saying this isn't my fault that this is all happening, and and to that note, it kind of is your fault, but homie went too far, but he was raised by people that go take things too far, i.e. you and Carly normally take things too far, yeah, so he's a product of his environment, moving along, <laughs> gonna be like twer you just dancing all over this place because we about to get to the most funnest part of this whole entire scene and that's when johnny john walks up in there with his beautiful what is it bluish silver eyes he got some beautiful eyes they're creepy but they're beautiful and um while mike was pleading his case john walks in and sonny walks over to antagonize john <laughs> And Sonny questions John, keeping his distance from his ex-wife and his children. And he's like, I'm just here to work out. He says, yeah, but you know, you're all up in, you know, uh, you know, you're all up over here with me and my kids, questioning my ex-wife. And then John, kind of, John was savage. I got to give it. John, doesn't, you can tell John hates, <laughs> hates Sonny. And John tells him that as much as he hates this, he has a job to do. So he is going to talk to whomever he damn well pleases to get the job done to protect your ass. <laughs> whomever, wherever, unless you got jurisdiction over the FBI, are you, or what does he say? Because then he cuts him with this one. Are you die of shame? There is nothing you can do about it. And I was like, so I felt like if if this was just the men going against men, they were going to come to blows anyway, because John was about that life, obviously. And I'm going to read a little bit more, and then I'm going to add a theory, and I want your guys' feedback on that theory. But um, where was I at? Sonny mentions uh, Carrie's B-Day, and John's, John don't like that. You don't get to say her name, not her pet name, like you cared about her. You know, Karen, Carrie. He said, oh, it's Carrie's birthday. <laughs> he knew John. <laughs> Sonny knew how to needle John really good. He needled him good, too. Sonny mentions, then mentions Stone, and John not visiting him but for one hour, and took, uh, and what took off when he needed him and didn't take care and you said you did take care of your brother i sat by him living you were out there living your best life with karen then you cheated on her you're not just a bad husband you're a bad brother <laughs> now honestly this did sound like two 15 year olds arguing you know a 15 year old argument at that point right there but Johnny, I mean, Sonny came in with the first needle point, Karen. Oh, I'm sorry, Carrie. Then he idled out with the second needle point, Stone, and how you abandoned him and how he died of AIDS, and I was the only one that was there for him, holding him through his fears. John was looking at him like, <laughs> Now, guys, at one time, I was thinking... Because, you know, John portrays this, I'm just a good cop, I'm not a backslider, there's no way I would break the law for anybody ever, 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 right? I was thinking maybe he had a split personality. But when I seen this scene, you know, a split personality where, like, the bad stone is the one coming after Sonny, using the, um, using the WSB to come after Sonny, but the good stone, you know, the good Jagger, the good John is working for the FBI. I don't know, I just thought. Theory, theory. But if that was the truth, that I am pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, John would have snapped. I'm pretty sure his other personality would have came into play. Okay? Because, well, that could have been the other personality swinging on Sonny. 
he missed because Sonny was like, whoa, what you doing, man? Like it was Matrix. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and then he runs up to him, would you want to do that again? And that's when Dante and Michael have to separate him. And here I am trying to look at John like, does he got a split personality? I don't know. He could have a split personality. Who knows? He could have a split personality. I don't know. And then that was a split personality that threatened him to Michael. Because a split personality knows to play it safe. Because he doesn't want everybody to know that he's a split, an alter. I don't know, guys. I'm just throwing it out here. I'm just throwing it out here. I'm just throwing it out there. It would be pretty interesting if he was a split. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Stone works for WSB and John works for, w <laughs> for the FBI. <laughs> Moving along because I'm being goofy. Like I said, Michael and Dante end up breaking them up. And John tells Mike to, to tell Sonny that he is his luck is running out. And that's when I was like, is that the altar talking? <laughs> or does he know his son's coming after him? Gosh, I, I can't wait till they can get to this. This See what, who's who's behind what? And let me finish. Let me, where we at? Where we at? I'm sorry. Sonny was trying to, oh. And Sonny was actually trying, and I kind of felt like Sonny was trying to antagonize John to make him hit him. I kind of felt that at the beginning when he walked up to him all casually and started talking mess because that's normally, well, that is Sonny. But anyway, you know, I thought he was trying to antagonize him. I kind of seen it, well, if he hits him, then he's going to get thrown off the case. And that is what Sonny wants because he does not trust um, John. He thinks either John's going to set him up to get shot or set him up for something else quite worse. He don't know. He don't want Dante to trust him. He don't want nobody to trust him. He don't trust him. He says he got something on him. And everybody going to find out the truth. Now we all know that. Sonny heard from that guy that got beat up. Stone's name. So we going to see if that's who he's talking about. Because maybe he did some more investigation. I don't know. But preview shows uh, Mr. Lee. Poor beat up beautiful man <laughs> in the wheelchair headed, headed to the hospital. And I'm like, normally these guys don't make it to the hospital. Miss Wu is slipping. He should have been unalive. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. Twer don't, don't, y'all don't leave me for saying that, but y'all know, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Why is he in the hospital? Take your question. He should be swimming with the fishes. <laughs> so we're going to go over to Dex's hideout. Where the room smelled like young teenage lust and angst. And yes, you know, I do, you know, I do. And I'm not going to say I agree with Jocelyn and her um, teenage angst. Because she's a grown up. She's not even a grown up. She's a young teen. She's a young woman. Young adult. Young adult angst. <laughs> but her naivety is starting to drive me crazy. It really is. And I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's bad when Dex is starting to look more mature than Jocelyn. And I always have wanted that little triangle to be between them where at one time when they were kind of Kim testing him to Christina and Christina's a lot more mature. I hate to say it. She just is. Well, she's older than Joss too, though. Yeah, she's older than Joss. I think she is. Yeah, she's older than Joss. So I liked when they were doing that triangle as the more Christina was the more the mature person and Dex and her were kind of, they, they did kind of came off. I liked the little chemistry between them. I actually liked the chemistry between Dex and Christina than I do Joss and, and, uh, Chris, Joss and Dex. I liked it a lot more when it was Christina. That's true. Now that I think about it. But anyway, let's get to the story because I'm talking. Y'all going to be like, why are you blabbering again? So Joss is uh, still naively thinking that they can beat Sonny at this game and Dex can come back because she's got Carly, Dante, and Michael. <laughs> I kept saying to myself, oh my God, bless your heart, honey. You so funny. <laughs> you trying to get that boy pow, 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 pow. You, it's wrong with you. And the fact that Dex had to let her know. And he was like, you do realize if Sonny doesn't do anything, that that will make him look weak, and then they will come after not only him, but the rest of your family? And I was like, oh, thank God there is some brain cells in this room. 
that they didn't get sweated out. I was just so happy that there were some brain cells. Because if they would have played deck so stupid, I honestly, guys, I would not have been able to tell you what happened in their scenes because I would have fast forwarded. I can't stand two stupid people. <laughs> I can't do two stupid people in the same room. I, my, oh, gosh, no. No. Um, where was I at? Dex finally makes Joss see kind of where, uh, why he can't come back. And she's just like, well, I'm just not going to let go. I'll just wait. You just, we, okay, well, that, you're right. Okay, we'll just wait some months. He's like, no, we, we can't wait no months. Well, you know, whatever. We'll wait years. She's like, no, you just need to move on. And I feel like she was finally, well, you know, getting it. And that's when Michael calls, talking about, Joss, make Dex come back. And I'm like, you know what, Sonny, maybe you should just unalive Michael. <laughs> I can't believe I said that on there. I don't mean it. Yes, I do. I'm so tired of these people meddling in this man's business. The only way they can save face, as far as I'm concerned, is if they're saying that Dex is supposed to come back and save Sonny's life. I'm just tired. Unless Michael is going to become the next leadership in the crime the crime family, he needs to sit down. Because while he's telling Dante he can't do anything because he's a cop and he has to go by this and we got Dex and we got Dex. Dex is not that guy either, okay? He's not that guy either, Michael. You're putting your egg basket in a kid that's probably around your age or younger. He's not that guy either, okay? Thankfully... Guys, in three days, we should be seeing the real Stone Cold. Oh, my God. I just realized that. Ah! I can't wait to see Jason. I don't know how he's coming in, but I can't wait. I think I'm, I, I covered um, the teenage angst story. I mean, not the teenage angst story. We're going to move along to the quarter mains, and we're talking about Brooklyn and Chase. Guys, um, Chase was bothering me. Y'all let me know how y'all felt, but I felt like he was super bipolar and really, like, getting loud with my girl Brooklyn, okay? And maybe y'all might not... Girl, he wasn't getting loud. He was getting loud to me. That's my opinion. I'm sticking with it. He was getting loud. And I was just like... When he came rushing in there, talking about, uh... What is this all about? And da da da. I'm like, whoa, 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 stand down, little Tonto. You talking to the quarter man. You better be glad her daddy went there. And where the hell is Ned? Because you just, this boy coming up here screaming at your daughter and everything. I couldn't believe Tracy was quiet about it. I'm like, you need to check your, uh, your tone, your son. I know I wasn't wrong, but you need to check your tone. You're getting all loud with Brooklyn. And I don't even like them. I mean, they, she okay. I don't hate her. I mean, there's people I just like more than her. Like Elizabeth. We'll talk about her later. But anyway. <laughs> Chase, uh, Chase comes up. Up there huffing and puffing at Brooklyn. Like he done lost his damn mind. That's exactly what I wrote down. <laughs> huffing and puffing like he done lost his damn mind. I was so boo. I was behooved by his um, his tone. His, his aura. Talking about uh, the termination event. Not being a confidence builder. And that's when Lois sends everybody out of the room. And Brooklyn tells him she swears that she had nothing to do with this and she didn't ask for it. And this dude still raising his voice. I wrote this in these notes. <laughs> Talking about it would have been nice if I would have had a heads up. She was like, I would have been nice for me too because I didn't know. And I'm like, you still got your voice on a level that needs to come down, my friend. And Lois should have said something too. Like, okay, I know you mad. I hear your anger, but check your tone. Check your tone, baby, okay? Because this ain't this girl's fault. And the fact that he came over there like that was was bothering me because before you left, you had already realized that it wasn't her that did it. But then you come over there all huffing and puffing, guys. I don't. Y'all don't have to agree with me on this one, but I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. This is how I feel, and I'm sticking with it. Chase was out of pocket. Fair and square, he was out of pocket as far as I'm concerned. And then um, they discussed Tracy being behind it, even though he had just talked about it with his brother and his dad. Mm. And, he, and he then asked Brooke, kind of angrily, does she want him to sign that agreement? I wanted him to sign it. I wanted him to eat it. I wanted him to sho her to shove it in his mouth and make him eat it. <laughs> 
Yes, guys, I chose a little bit of violence, a smidgen, okay? I'm allowed. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lois is upset that Tracy sicked the lawyer, lawyers on Chase, and Tracy's reminding uh, Lois that that is not how it was supposed to go down, but she is protecting her granddaughter. And Lois is, you know, complaining, and she doesn't like that Tracy is messing with her daughter's her daughter's life and then we're gonna swing back over to brooklyn and chase because that's how i kind of i just put them their story all together and brooklyn understands her grandmother but feels that she should be more welcoming having more of a, a welcoming her arms to chase and i i was like obviously you don't know your grandma that's normally not tracy welcoming in an interloper <laughs> that's what she called chase Kind of an interloper into her family. <laughs> so when she said that, I was like, Brooklyn, you forgot who your grandma is, girlfriend, please. And Chase understands all of a sudden and tells Brooklyn when he got the prenup, he got mad. But when he thought about it, he calmed down just for him to come storming over there. What's this all about? Didn't you just calm down? So what, you get? You got hyped up in the car? Your daddy hyped you up or something, little boy? <laughs> and then he comes up with this craziness. There's just a chance that we won't make it. And guys, I'm not, uh, I think I'm going to just knock their story out real quick because I'm in it right now. This boy, I guess I'm saying boy, had the nerve to compare their marriage to Willow and his. Bro. You already knew the real reason why Willow said that she wanted to marry you was because she thought you were dying. You already knew the real reason behind that. How And just like Brooklyn said, how can you compare the two? Willow married you out of obligation because you were dying. Y'all were basically saying goodbye to each other. I marry you, you fool, because I love you, fool. That's the only part she forgot to add. Chase just bothered me and his bipolar with his little ups and downs. And maybe I started so, you know, unfortunately, soap opera relationships don't last forever. So moving along, we, we, they, they, he, 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 they, 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 they confess they love for one another. And he gets down and signs the paper. And she's like, what are you doing? And she rips it up. You never sign anything you haven't read or you don't know. You're a quarter main now. You don't sign nothing without lawyers. <laughs> and he says, thank you. And they agree to get their lawyers to work out a plan because Brooklyn does know. And he agrees that she does need a prenup. Okay. So they happy. Right? Oh, and he don't like that dress either. Which I don't blame him because that dress was hideous. And the fact that we had to see her walking around in it all day just made me just want to hurl. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, um, he don't like the dress either. He makes up a reason about it being, um, about it, uh, he already seen it, so it's bad luck. And I think, she, yeah, she tells him about the dress that she wants, and it's Tracy's. I mean, yeah, not Tracy's. Well, it is Tracy's now. Her grandma Lila's dress and how much it meant to her and her mom. And, but how, you know, her grandma, she's, you know, her mom. Lila uh, and Tracy had an interesting relationship. Lila was very loving to all of her crazy-ass kids, though. And she's like, I just don't feel like it's right to ask her that. But anywho, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wrap that around. Because we're going to get back to um, Lois Spaz, not on Tracy. Talking about, first you got her betraying Maxie. Then you making her take a job she don't like to do. Then you running her around raggedy at the job. Then you're controlling her wedding and manipulating the powers that be as far as her prenup. And Tracy reminds her that she is actually a grandmother trying to protect her granddaughter. Lois talks about uh, how Lila made, how Lila uh, made and created and did everything she can for her on her wedding day. And Tracy promptly reminds her that she ain't her mama, okay? And she can't even measure up to her mama. But what she can do is do what she does best. And that's protect her family's investment. That's protect her granddaughter. And you know what, guys? I'm not even mad. Lois needs to sit back. And she actually did. Because it might have been 
improper timing, but Tracy's point on about it. It needs to be done. And she says, who has time, like she told Gregory, who has time to be thinking about all that when you're trying to pick out flowers? Somebody has to do that kind of thinking. Because Gregory was the one who heard when she said, uh, she called, because during that conversation with Lois, <laughs> Tracy said, we all know that marriages don't last forever, and all we need is one interloper to come bring everything down. <laughs> and Gregory's like, interloper, are you talking about my kid? Yep, she is. Your little angry crybaby, big boy, mad boy in the other room, giving Brooklyn about 15 different uh, varieties of his, of his, um, of his personalities. Oof. Already, I can't believe it. Chase used to get me, uh, drive me crazy before, but ugh. Sometimes, you know, he has his ways. But uh, moving along, where was he at? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Tra so Gregory actually does agree that uh, prenuptials is a smart thing to do. He doesn't like how Tracy did it. And she says, well, you got to know that wasn't, uh, that was on accident. He's like, yeah, uh, okay, well, yeah, that's, that's understandable. But I do agree with you that a prenup is good to have and I'm like I can't believe we did a whole show about why somebody should have a prenup that just <laughs> a bunch of rich people that should come with the uh, works I want to because I've been talked a lot about Brooklyn and Chase crying about his failed marriages and then we just talked about Tracy and Oh, so then we let's talk about. Oh, so then they start talking about the wedding dates, and Gregory said Gregory says that he's bringing a friend, and then Tracy says, "Oh, a friend." And he says, "Yeah, a good friend, Alexis. I think it's good to bring friends to this." And then he asks Tracy because now she's eating crow because she thought that Gregory, had, you know, was filling a, was filling uh, Alexis, and. Uh, Who's she going to bring? Who's going to be on her arm? Who's the lucky guy? And she's like, starts to stammer, and, he, and he's looking at her, and that's when Lois comes to the rescue and says, oh, well, you know, she's chasing everybody off of her. She hasn't had a chance to really think of anybody yet. I was like, good save, Lois. Thank you. And he let, and as he's walking out with crybaby Chase, um, he tells Tracy to save a dance. And all I keep thinking is, I really like Gregory and Tracy and I really want them to find a way to cure Gregory because I don't want to see her with Tad the Chad I just I can't take Tad not not with Tracy that's just the, the Kim's not there for me I don't know y'all guys tell me that's what I heard in the grapevine is that Tad they're gonna put you know when Gregory dies they're gonna put Tad with Tracy and I'm like that's just like the whole entire they're talking about bringing Adam back for Trina why, Jesus, why can't they just bring somebody else or just make somebody else or have a cousin come in or maybe Jake? I don't know. Jake's too young. I'm sorry. I don't know. Not, no, not Adam. And no, not Tad and Tracy. They got to, if they got to, they brought Gregory up here and had him all propped up just to be passing away. kind of pisses me off. We're going to talk shortly. Oh. Wrapping it up, so um, they they get into the wedding dresses. They're looking at wedding dresses again, and they're all they're all ex you know. And Tracy is going to let Brooklyn wear Lila's dress, which I felt thought was just so beautiful. I just the dress is itself is pretty, and she says, "Honey, it's yours. Get it him." She says, "I wish I would have wore it for my mom when she wanted me to, but maybe I wasn't meant to wear it. Maybe I was meant to pass it to you. So I'm giving it to you." Because Tracy's not having any more kids, you know what I'm saying? And her only child is Ned. I think she has. Does she have a son, Dylan? Is he alive still? I don't know. I have to look that up. I can't remember. But anyway, Ned. Ned's got Brooklyn. Brooklyn's getting married. Brooklyn can pass this down to her daughter, her great, her great granddaughter. So there we have it. So um, yeah, it was a beautiful, and that's what Brooklyn. That's. I I already knew Brooklyn wanted that dress when she first, when they first started talking about it that she didn't want none of those dresses that she wanted to wear her grandma Lila's dress. I kind of figured that out at the beginning. But anyway, we're going to wrap it around and we're going to um, talk real quick about Finn. So Violet's getting married, y'all. This little grown young girl is getting married. But we all know that the real person that's getting married is going to be Finn 
and Elizabeth. At least that's what Violet is planning. Mm -hmm. I, I see now. I was like, when I seen the invitations that she sent to Elizabeth, I said, yep, and I'm pretty sure she got her daddy's credit card again. And she's ordering dresses and a flower bouquet just for Elizabeth to wear. And it won't be too wedding-y, but it's going to be wedding-y. You know what I'm saying? And it's so funny and ironic because that's actually what Finn and um, Elizabeth are talking about is marriage. And they they decide that, you know, they're going to take their time and just keep loving on each other and keep letting this grow. And then we'll, they'll go from there. But little does Finn and Elizabeth know, Violet is a plot team. She got daddy's credit card and she knows how to use it. So how much y'all want to bet that that's what's going on with Violet's wedding. It was cute how they played into the parents played into it. And Elizabeth was talking about how I think it was Jake that dated that was had a crush on a cartoon and how that strange was. And Violet might would grow on and and Finn's like I'm not ready for this. And I'm looking like you don't see that your daughter's playing mix catch up. I mean hook up. <laughs> we see it or at least I see it. I don't know. But anywho, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys have an amazing uh, day tomorrow and get some real well, good rest. And I will see you guys tomorrow. It's been awesome hanging out with you. Once again, welcome new subscribers. Hit that like and subscribe button. Mwah! See you then. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>